on Jason Verrett on his report there. Hey, Jalen, what's going on, man? DJ and Bucky, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and give us a little bit about your backstory here. Uh, well, my name is Jalen Morris. Uh, my background, I'm originally from Birmingham, Alabama. Um, did my undergrad here at the university um, in marketing. Uh, on the, during that time, I was coaching also at a local high school at, called Central Tuscaloosa High School. I was coaching uh, wide receivers and defensive backs. Um, after that, I uh, decided to get my master's in sports management, which I'm currently doing now. Um, got some relationships and formed some relationships as far as being connected with some of the personnel uh, guys that work in our staff up here. Started working up here and now recruiting the personnel staff and still currently just enjoying it and uh, trying to build my foundation in evaluation. You know, I mean, you're, you're there obviously at a chance to learn at the knee of one of the great coaches in college football, a guy who also has some NFL experience. Most what have man. what have you learned just during your brief time in Alabama working in the office that you think will help you when it comes to being a personnel evaluator? Oh, well, first and foremost, the preparation, uh, the attention to detail, um, just the grind, man, the grind, the attention to detail, the intensity, uh, the consistency. Coach Saban does a phenomenal job as far as uh, – being time, very time-oriented, very detailed, uh, very consistent as far as what he wants and as far as the demands of, you know, of what they ask us to do. So just, I would just say preparation, man. Sometimes, you know, I think we get caught up into the what too much instead of the how, and I think Coach Saban does a good job at embracing that process and embracing the how. Uh, that's a great answer. I'll tell you what, uh, when we were working with teams, when Bucky, especially when I think about you in Carolina, Bucky, and when I was in Baltimore, we, we watched players in college and we talked about, okay, this guy looks like a Raven or this guy looks like a Panther. There's a certain way that they played, a certain style that they have. You're, you're the general – I'm promoting you now. You're the general manager of a team. You're starting a football team. Yeah. What do you want in a player? First, I would want – competitive toughness i want a guy to compete because as you all know as you know former players you know it's all about competition it's all about you know wanting guys to compete do they love football um and then after that obviously you know can they play can they play the game do they understand the game a lot of people get caught into athleticism and you know combine numbers but i'm all about can the guy play the game you know and at the end of the day does he make plays and can he play the game well, you did, uh, you did a great job on your report on Jason Verrett. Bucky, when you looked at the report here, what, uh, what jumped out at you? The thing that stood out to me is your description and how descriptive you were, particularly when it came to talking about him and man coverage and off-man coverage. You said, an off-man shows a smooth backpedal, good hip flexibility to open up at the top of routes, shows an elite burst out of his brakes, and elite speed to turn and run with receivers with good or better speed downfield. Um, when we're – Sitting in meetings, it's very important that you can paint a picture for the general manager, the head coach, and I thought you did a great job of that in that little segment. I appreciate that. I appreciate that from you guys. Why did you pick why did you pick Verrett to, to evaluate here? Uh I picked Verrett because, well, first of all, I'm a big I'm a big D B guy. Um, uh, that's I would say that that would be my specialty. Uh I and another reason I picked Verrett, I thought Verrett kinda of went under the went under the radar a little bit. I think a lot of people don't don't really know how good he really is. You know, when I was watching this guy, to me, man, when he's healthy, he's a top five corner, you know, second to none. You know, I would I would argue with him as far as with the Talibs, with the Chris Harris. I, I, I believe he's right in there in that bunch of, of corners when you're talking about the top five in the NFL. No, he's a, he's a big-time player. You did a great job on the report. Now, as we transition a little bit here looking into the future, I know you're already in, you've been around the football game here for a little while now. Uh, why, why would you want to get into scouting? Well, first of all, I just – I love the – well, first of all, I'm competitive, first of all. Let's, uh, second of all, um, I enjoy, you know, evaluating players and seeing where guys fit, seeing where you can get the best out of these guys, you know, and, you know, just, just learning and, you know, learning about these players, man. And, you know, I think the, the best part about it for me is just, you know, just seeing what a guy can and can't do, you know, seeing where he fits, where can we best utilize this guy to, you know, to be more to, for him to be more successful as far as using his traits and using, and using his athletic ability. You know, I mean, I think that's a – terrific answer is very similar to how i kind of thought about the process i was always fascinated by putting the pieces of the puzzle 
right. together. In a very competitive industry, uh, a lot of aspiring scouts out there in the world, what separates you from others that want to be scouts? I would say, first of all, my ability to communicate a player to the reader. Uh, I believe I have a good grasp and I'm very confident as far as my writing skills. I think that's a very underrated aspect when, you know, you talk about getting to those entry level positions. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to uh, the Scouting Academy, which I was a part of, which helped me build that foundation that's ran by Dan Hatman. I worked uh, with Dan. I worked with Dan yes, in Philly. Yeah. Yeah, Dan is a, very, a good friend of mine. Uh, Dan really helped me hone my skills as far as my writing skills and being able to, you know, being able to communicate, you know, when you're writing as far as the format of the report and just, you know, the layout and, you know, putting the right words together to make it, you know, paint that picture that you want, as Bucky talked about earlier. Well, you, you did a great job, and now you've made it into the final five here. So we got to get from five to two. So I don't know if you have NFL Game Pass yet, but you do now. Until uh, July 31st, off the line here, we'll get you the, the code there so you can get on NFL Game Pass and get Appreciate the, get the all 22 here till July 31st. And you need to get on there because the deadline now we're gonna you got to pick Verrett. Now we're gonna assign you a player, assign the same guy to the final five. Okay. Okay. Now it's okay. your it's your lucky day because you mentioned that the DBs is your area that you uh, uh, that you enjoy because okay. we're we're gonna go to a guy that me and Bucky both scouted coming out of college. And we're uh, going to go with an old veteran, a man with a glorious beard, <laughs> Eric Weddle from the Baltimore Ravens. We need Eric. you to get we need you to get three games in on Game Pass, okay? Get three game tapes in, and then get your report in on Eric Weddle by March 2nd, and let's see if you can't get in the final two and, and win the big prize and get you a whole year of this Game Pass. Does that work? Yeah. Does it yeah. work? Hey, Jalen, th- congratulations on making it on this far. It looks like you put a lot of time into this. Yeah. And, oh, uh, yeah. We enjoy getting a chance to visit with you, and we wish you the best of luck, man. Oh, most definitely. Do you do you guys mind if I ask you guys one or two questions before we get off the cast? Yeah, we we got you've got two minutes. Go. What two you minutes. Got? Uh-uh. What would you? What would the best advice be from you guys to a guy who once he gets into that entry level spot and building that foundation? I always look. One of the best pieces of advice I got, Bucky, when I got in, is you're always building your bank of players, and that's going to make it easier to evaluate. The more players you have evaluated over time, you're going to be able to see who hit, who missed, and you're going to right. know what you're looking for. The best advice I got in when I first got in there, every free moment I had when I wasn't doing assigned duties, I would go try and watch. Okay, who are the best ten linebackers in the league? And I'd go study them. Okay, what makes them so good? And if I had another free time, I'd go watch the best 10 quarterbacks. And what are they doing that makes them good? That was right. the best advice I got. Yes, what DJ is pointing to is you want to try and understand what the prototypes at the position are. Because if you understand the guys that are playing well, you now know what it takes to play in the league. I would always study the guys that were the Pro Bowl players or the All Pros because those are the marquee players, the blue chippers. I wanted to see what traits they had. And so when I'm looking at college guys, if I see guys with similar traits, I now have an understanding of how they may have to play the game to be successful in the league. All right, we got another interview coming up, so we get a quick one. Give me one more quick question here. What do you got? Uh, could you give me just another pointer on as far as our reports and as far as when you're communicating those reports to a GM or to an assistant GM or director of personnel? Hit them with what you think about them right away. So if you can think about it and do it in a one-line fashion, uh, you talked about Jason Verrett. Jason Verrett is an elite cornerback who excels at playing in off coverage, has a versatile skill set. Something that in that 15 seconds, I know exactly who he is, what he is, and how you feel about him that way. Because a lot of times when you have a lot of reports, you don't have a lot of time to really go in-depth we want right. to make sure that you leave him with, in TV we call it a sound bite, something mm-hmm. that when the general manager is away and he's thinking about that player, he can remember him based 